This is the eSports exclusive presented by DX Racer. Hello friends, Eric and Mathos here to bring you the latest in eSports. And last weekend was pretty insane on Twitch. Business was bumping the LCS, came back, made its debut, still didn't have quite the same numbers as the Overwatch League, but that did go down a bit, a bit as well. But the star of Twitch was CSGO. Well, CSGO went buck. Pulled something close to like 450,000 viewers, peak around 500K. Next closest guys are Overwatch and League. They're pulling about 100,000 apiece. However, the debuts for Overwatch League versus League in the NALCS, about 75,000 off in favor of Overwatch. Not necessarily the worst. Everybody had their big matches those days, so it's clearly expecting new things, excitement, uh, watching TSM get absolutely liquidated. Yeah! Nice. They got dominated. It was delicious. Uh, the viewers are hyped, but things will probably settle down. Overwatch is already losing viewers. It's dropped about 10 to 15% on the last week, just from yesterday. So uh, hopefully things don't fall any lower than that, because the bloodthirsty haters can't wait to see that poor, poor eSport collapse under its own weight. I mean, it's already a couple weeks in, and in pretty much happens in League of Legends too when you're in that mid-season bit. Pe people get bored. Yeah. There's too many games, so wouldn't be too concerned. And CSGO, not a dead game, apparently. No, great it's stuff. A, still pulling crazy numbers, but uh, jumping back to Overwatch League, you know, the Koreans are continuing to dominate the league. As a lot of people expected, they look super good. But uh, the Dallas Fuel, people also thought they would be really good. They don't look so good. No, they're getting pistol whipped. It has been a real rough ride. Now, to be fair, they haven't had cracks at the wind pinatas yet. That's coming up this weekend. Uh, Koreans, they've had every shot in the barn. With maybe one or two exceptions, London and New York have to play each other. The Valiant, they're still two and two, and they've had to run into some monsters. But Seoul and New York have been playing this weekend, and that's gonna be the battle of the undefeateds. We'll see how that goes out for the Koreans, but boy, oh boy, the trouble does not stop for Dallas. And for Dallas, their biggest issue so far this year isn't even actually in the game. Uh, our boy XQC is finding himself in some trouble. Yeah, he uh, should probably stop streaming uh, right now. Uh, he jumped on his stream post-match after the Outlaws beat the crap out of him 4-0. And Muma, in the post-fight interview, memed him back with his own meme. Uh, unfortunately for XQC, he didn't find that particularly fun. Dismissed it out of hand with a homophobic comment, and the league and the team do not take those things lightly. The league smacked him up for four games, and then the team followed suit and benched him for the rest of the season. Pundits Online pretty much agreed with the sentence. Uh, XQC did not, and he did not agree with the pundits either, so he went on his stream once again, and he roasted every single person who mentioned his name in any kind of tweet for a good hour straight. Slightly tone-deaf reaction to an already sticky situation and hopefully things work out, you know, in the benefit the team plans on sitting people down, more than likely for media training. But uh, he's a wild goose. It's not the internet anymore where he's not liable for himself. He's got a team and an industry all behind him and his actions, obviously. Unfortunately for him, are way further ahead in the distance than his existence is at this moment. It's not looking too great if he keeps this up. Media training, something you think these guys would have figured out during the preseason or really just before the actual season got started so they would avoid issues like this and understand what kind of spotlight they're under in this league. Absolutely. Uh, last weekend, upset City in a couple of different events, starting with the CSGO Major. The eight teams, final eight teams are set, and only two of them are the ones you'd expect. Now, unfortunately, six out of the eight legends did not qualify. SK and Fnatic are the only guys left when the dust was settled. G2, FaZe, Na'Vi, Mouse Sports, and Quantum Bellator fire. Round out the top eight. Cinderella store for QB Fire is probably coming to an end, but it should be one hell of a run for them if you take all things into consideration. And the brackets are sorted out, so we may actually get that SK phase finale that everyone's hoping for. It should be a real banger. It starts the Friday, and uh, hopefully it'll pull even more viewers so we can uh, officially put this dead game theory to rest and give Boston Major in the start of the 2018 Counter-Strike season a big resounding success. I'm hoping for it. It should be a brawl. Yeah, I mean, as the tournament goes on, you got to think they're only going to get more and more viewers. So expect to see CSGO at the top of that Twitch page. Uh, that wasn't the only upsets last weekend. The Super Smash Bros. tournament at Genesis. Our boy Plop ran the table, had a heroic performance playing Melee. Plop tore through the gods like Kratos. Went through Armada. He went through Mango. Hungry Box 
twice in order to take the final set. Hungrybox had some choice words for Leffen, who he beat two times in a row. Gave him a what's up, mother trucker on the way out the door. Those guys hate each other's guts. I love to see the spiteful crap talk. Everything is building itself up. Plup beat Hungrybox 3-0. Hungrybox resets the bracket 3-0 himself, and then it's a nail-biter for the finale, but Plup comes out on top for your melee chant. 1,400 people signed up for this tournament. The man sitting at fifth place certainly earned himself quite the statement for 2018's year for him. Yeah, and it's been a while since someone outside of that top three, top four made a run like that, so shout out to the Plup there. Uh, last weekend was also the Hearthstone World Championships, and we've got our first ever winner from Asia. That Tom6229 from Taiwan ended up running it down, sweet 250k in his back pocket, and the first ever world champion from Asia. He ended up beating Frozen 3-2 with a modified J Druid. Still had the board presence from the last few cards pulled out. Real good finish for him, and a great start for his year in 2018 as well. A lot of guys making some seriously authentic statements to their talent this year, and hopefully these things ride out for all these champs. Yeah, absolutely. And you got a whole lot more coming up this weekend. More LCS, more Overwatch, more CSGO. Twitch, again, is going to be bumping. And where you got to sit to watch all this on Twitch is on a DX Racer chair, just like this one, to keep that spine aligned and fine-tuned. And if you go to DXRacer.com and use the promo code SHOTCALLERS, you get 15% off all DX Racer products. You got to do it. 15% off. It's undeniable. It's nothing to laugh at. That's all for this episode of the Esports Exclusive. I'm Eric here with Mathos, bringing you the latest and greatest in esports, and we'll see you guys next week. This is the Esports Exclusive, presented by DX Racer.